Okay, so I have a cool video for you guys today. And by cool video, of course, I mean we're talking about all-in-one CPU liquid coolers, like the Cooler Master ML360 RGB, like you see behind me there. So we're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of an all-in-one CPU cooler and helping you guys decide if an all-in-one CPU cooler is for you. I mean, of course, it's cool. You can tell that. But it's also cool. It keeps your CPU very cool. So... Okay, enough of the cool puns. We're just going to be taking a look at what you get with an all-in-one cooler and if it's worth it. So I'm going to quick go over the pros of an all-in-one cooler, then I'm going to go over the cons of an all-in-one cooler, kind of comparing it to other options, and then I'll finish off by letting you guys know what I think the right market for the all-in-one cooler is. So the system I'm using is my i9-9900K build that you guys might recognize from my Phantom Gaming build. That's of course featuring the ASRock Phantom Gaming motherboard along with 16 gigabytes of the T-Force RGB RAM. So very cool looking RAM to kind of match the cooler back there. But if you're interested in any of the parts I'm featuring in this video, of course there'll be links in the description below for you guys to check out. First off, it is very cool looking. If your PC is on your desk like I have back here, it's really a centerpiece to the PC and looks extremely cool especially the master liquid 360 with all the rgb lighting effects that you see here of course those are also customizable there's so many different options of rgb that you can use with a cooler like this that it uh, can allow for basically any sort of rgb look that you're going for also the next cool is that it's extremely good at cooling which is exactly what you want a cpu cooler to do so that's handy plus it's going to give you about the best cooling possible without going to a closed loop custom water cooled system so right now i have the master liquid 360 rgb cooling the i9 9900k that you see behind me and for example this was previously being cooled as some of you guys might know by the hyper 212 evo rgb but it doesn't serve the cooling purposes very well on such an extreme CPU. So a lot of you guys know the i9-9900K runs very hot. Even on stock settings, it was thermal throttling a bit with the Hyper 212 Evo and getting too hot at around 100C and then thermal throttling. So then once I switched it over to an all-in-one 360 cooler, I started getting amazing temps, obviously, as you'd expect from an expensive cooler like this. And I was actually able to overclock the i9-9900K to 5.2 gigahertz and still have temps kept in check with the 360 cooler. I was seeing like temps around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, never even hitting 90 degrees. And so pretty amazing results with an all-in-one cooler. And then thirdly, you have a very quiet system. The fans don't have to spin too fast on an all-in-one cooler. The pump does make a little bit of noise, but is virtually silent in most cases, especially if it's just idling. And uh, yeah, you end up with a very quiet system. And then for the fourth pro, it is very easy to switch CPUs in and out when you're using an all-in-one cooler like this. All you have to do is take the pump off. And you also have some great RAM clearance, obviously. Sometimes you run into RAM clearance issues using a typical CPU cooler. But with an all-in-one cooler, you have very great clearance for any sort of size of RAM that you might be using. So those are the pros. If you guys are doing overclocking or have your PC on your desk and want some really cool looking results, an all-in-one cooler might be for you. All right, now for the cons. The issues you might not be too crazy about an all-in-one cooler. First of all, there's moving parts. Of course, a typical radiator cooler has nothing but the fan moving on it, whereas with an all-in-one cooler, you have the pump mechanism. And with moving parts like that, there's always a chance for something to fail. Now, personally, I've been using all-in-one coolers for a few years now in a few different systems, and I haven't had a pump fail on me yet, but that's not to say that they won't. Of course, there's more likelihood of an all-in-one cooler failing because there's the moving parts of the pump, something to be aware of. And also something to be aware of is that there's always the potential, even though it's 99.9% .9 not gonna happen, there's always that tiny percent chance that you have a leak in an all-in-one cooler. And I know that scares a lot of people. Personally, again, I've never had a leak in an all-in-one cooler, and I think they've gotten pretty good, especially Cooler Master, at keeping their um, systems very tight and not giving you much chance at all at ever having a leak. But there is that tiny little chance, so always something to be aware of. And if your PC isn't like on your desk as a centerpiece, and if you're not really interested in overclocking and you're gonna just put your system under your desk or something, then I would say don't bother with an all-in-one cooler as it's just a bit more expensive. 
And there's that tiny little chance that you could have a leak, and if you can't monitor your CPU cooler because it's under your desk, you probably don't want an all-in-one cooler. And then the next con is going to be the price. An all-in-one cooler is going to cost a bit more than a typical CPU cooler. The 360 version that you see behind me from Cooler Master costs around $150, $160. And then it also comes in a 240 millimeter size, which costs around $100. And then it comes in a 120 millimeter fan size, which is more like $60, $70, I believe. So price is going to be a factor. So it's not going to be for all you guys. But if you're looking into getting some nice overclocks in, an all-in-one cooler is pretty much the best option if you're not going to go for a closed loop. So yes, the only cons I see for an all-in-one cooler is the tiny percent chance of a leak or a pump failure and the extra expense. And of course, they also have the chance that the pump could make a little bit of extra noise, but that's not really a con because the fans don't have to spin as fast as they do on others. Eh, you know, it's not really a con. So unfortunately, I don't have the option to share benchmarks with you guys as I have a small studio here and don't have access to too many CPU coolers to benchmark, but I can kind of share my personal opinion I've, as I've used a variety of coolers in the past. And for a nice slim design, I really like an all-in-one cooler. Of course, you could get decent cooling results from a large radiator and you slap that bad boy on there and you can forget about it, but it doesn't look very cool. So if you have your PC on your desk, it's not gonna really be the centerpiece anymore. And you're gonna have possibly issues with RAM clearance and stuff as a large cooler takes up a lot of space and depending on your case, you may or may not fit a large radiator cooler like that. Okay, so for my final conclusion, I think if you're into overclocking and your PC is kind of the centerpiece on your desk, an all-in-one cooler like the one I have behind me, the Master Liquid 360 RGB is a very good option for you. If you can afford it, I would say go for it. I've been really enjoying being able to overclock my 9900K to 5.2 gigahertz and still have temperatures in check, so it's a great option. But if you're not really into overclocking and you don't want to ever have the fear of anything going wrong on your PC, you're a little bit more secure with a typical CPU cooler and you can get very similar performance with a solid CPU cooler. Probably not quite as good as an all-in-one cooler like you have behind me, but you can come close to matching that with a radiator cooler at a cheaper price and have it a bit more reliable. So if you're not really caring about looks too much and you just want something reliable and you're not really caring about doing too much overclocking, then skip an all-in-one cooler and go with a typical radiator cooler. But if you want something like a centerpiece behind me and you want the best overclocking possible without setting up a custom water loop, then the Master Liquid 360R might be the greatest option for you at the time. And those are my final thoughts. So yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys kind of make a decision if you were on the fence debating between a typical CPU cooler or an all-in-one cooler. Hopefully this video helps you kind of make your mind up um, for what your situation is and what would be best for your system. So that's gonna do it for me guys though. Like I said, I've been using all-in-one coolers in most of my builds for a while now and I've never had any issues with them. But that is not to say that there's always a little bit of a chance with an issue. But that's going to do it, guys. Just a short video of me sharing my thoughts on all-in-one coolers and my personal experiences. Hopefully, it helps you make a decision if you were kind of on the fence. But uh, that's going to do it. So if you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. And if you want to share your thoughts in the comments, go ahead. That's going to do it for me. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye-bye.